I'm about to call the most badass female entrepreneurs and ask how they made their first million dollars. You ready? Let's call them. Good morning, Catherine, AKA Irish Firecracker. Good morning. How <laughs> did you make your first million dollars? Let's just jump right in first thing in the morning. I created a company called Best Self. So it's bestself.co and we create tools around productivity, being efficient, and improving different areas of your life that started very type, type A, hit your goals, da da da. And then personally, I was like, oh, wait a minute, there's more to life than just like business goals. I don't know if you've got that memo yet, Noah, but that's when I was like, oh, let me focus on other areas. And so we've actually come out with other products that are doing really well around relationships and um, just other skills you should develop to, ha to help you be successful that are outside of just like, okay, what are your 90 day goals? First 10, you know, 10,000 orders was on Kickstarter. So 10,000 units we sold on Kickstarter, um, which helped us like fund the whole business. And then from there, we sort of created this sort of tribe around the product. And the first product was a three month product. But obviously we'd come back every three to six months. We create a community around it. Um, we also were like super engaged in the group so that to sort of create this habit of using the product. So a lot of people try to get people in the door and then they, they're like, okay, we got that. Let's get another customer. But it's like, okay, how do you market and create things that help them consume the product? So they have to buy more and they find success with it. So finding success with the products was a huge piece. Cause I'm like, I don't want to pay for someone and just have them come once. I want them to be successful so that they, it's a no brainer to come back and buy again. I think what's interesting is that you made a million creating a business for yourself. Like, do you think that's how other people should be approaching if they want to make a million dollars? Yeah, I would say figure out something to sell first. So it wasn't my first business, but it was my biggest business. And I, I think figuring out what stage you're in, because I used to be an architect. And so my only thing was like, okay, what's my freedom vehicle? What's going to get me out of this job? And then you can figure out, okay, what am I going to do long term? Most people are like, well, I'm not really passionate about this. So I don't want to spend my rest of my life on it. It's like, yeah, nobody cares. Just like figure out how you pay, get paid to live. And then you'll figure out what you actually want to do, which became best, best self, which was bigger. But the first thing I did was like a shop fly design store. And I, I made a good, good chunk of money from that, considering the little time I put into it. Vanessa Van Edwards, yes. Yes. Thank you for coming on and doing this. Honestly, it's been amazing. And I think this is going to be so powerful for men and well for women number one and men i love it I, I i love the idea also because i think we have to be transparent and share with each other right like we have to share the insider tips so i'm so happy to share it all how did you make your first million dollars yes wow such a weird question to say it's so, it's so i when, when you when i was thinking about that question i was like that is it's insane because it was very very slow and then all at once you know, in the beginning part of the business, you're trying everything. Like you're literally trying everything. 100%. We had like self-published books. We had Kindle singles. We had ads on our website. We had YouTube. We had my own course. I had other people's courses. I was corporate speaking. I was selling my hair. I mean, like, I was like trying everything. Oh, and you sold your hair? No, I, I once I did, but I was just joking. <laughs> you know, like in the beginning of your business, you're doing, <laughs> you know, you're doing everything you can. 100%. Honey, right? I had an idea that engineers and computer scientists, anyone who's really technical, probably wants to learn people skills like they learn technical skills, right? It was a hypothesis. I was like, I think an engineer who is very into hard skills would like to learn soft skills in a hard skills way. Okay, so I go, and so where are all the engineers? Where are they? So I'm like, oh, they're all learning coding on places like Udemy. That's where they are. So Udemy is a course platform. And at the time in 2011, it was all like coding programming courses. I thought, okay, if all these engineers or aspiring engineers are on here learning coding, what if I put a people skills course amidst all the programming courses? Maybe they'll take my course during lunch. Maybe I'll be the fun course. So I take my janky iPhone, like generation two, I don't even know what generation, but a very old iPhone. I drag all the lights in my house over to my kitchen. No professional lights. I sit in my kitchen. I put on like a half of a fancy suit on the top and like PJs on the bottom. And I film a two hour overview of body language course. So it took a while to get it approved. And then I opened up my inbox and it was like sales. And I kept scrolling through my inbox, sales, pages and pages and pages of just sales. And we have now, now 390,000 students. 
that. So the way to make your first million is try a bunch of things out and then kind of notice some gap that and one of them eventually hit and you kind of went in all in on that or, or what happened from there? Yeah, so once that hit, I created like a bunch more courses in that same vein. What I was trying to do was, and you know, the, the, the famous blue ocean strategy is like you always want to go to a, a clear ocean where the, the waters aren't so bloody from sharks eating everything. I noticed the red ocean was engineers trying to learn coding and there was a lot of courses on coding. So I went to the red ocean and I was like, okay, here are all these engineers who are, are competing eating for coding courses. The blue ocean is actually to stick with engineers, but just to give them a break course, a fun course, a course that will complement their engineering skills. And so I would say the way, the way to make your first million, and this is by the way, been the exact same strategy I've used for the next millions is look at something that's working really well and create a complement to it. I made my first million dollars when we took an investment in on Ning, my first company and I was able to sell some of my stock. What was that like seeing it in the bank? It was life-changing. I had never had that much money in my bank account before. Uh, and it, it made me feel like so much more was possible in my life. I could make things happen. Which if you know that you can make things happen versus feeling like the world is actually like, that you, that it's happening to you, as opposed to something that you can have impact over or into, uh, it, it's, it's, you know, fundamentally different. In terms of the ability, even when you have hundreds of dollars or thousands of dollars, your ability to have an impact to manifest what it is that you want to do, we all have that ability. And I wish it didn't take me looking at that bank balance to really understand that. And now as I look back and I look at like the fact that I can invest in things, including my own business, it makes a huge difference to, to know that, that I can have an impact on the world around me as opposed to just letting the world happen to me. Ah, oh, amen. Wow, that, that was powerful. I love that. For, for other people that aspire to get to the million dollars, get to your level, you know, what would you recommend them to, to consider and start doing today? I think we have moved from a world where you have to build a product to make a million dollars to actually being able to do that by bringing people together in a community or with online courses. The tools have never been better. Uh, the ability and, and the desire for people that people have to want to be a part of a community that is mastering something interesting or important together has never been higher. If products go away, your network and the network that you're building, the community and the relationships that you are helping create between people, that is more valuable than anything else that you can actually build and sell on the internet. Uh, and it has never been easier to create a course, a community, a membership. As it is. Shout out MightyNetworks.com. Uh, all right, let's jump in. Uh, thank you for doing this. This is awesome. Um, yeah, you're welcome. Thanks for having me. Where on? Where's the where's kimchi and cup here? Uh, kimchi is right here. Kimchi! God, I miss kimchi. <laughs> let's uh, let's dive in. Um, how did you make your first million dollars? Uh, so it was just it was aggregate. Um, it was real estate holdings um, and my business portfolio. So it was Sin City Cupcakes and of course uh, Christie's International Real Estate. So how did you get to that point? You jumped at you're like oh yeah just like you know had some real estate had some cupcakes had a brokerage. <laughs> Um, well, I started my career in law. Um, I was working for a law firm that still does business litigation and business bankruptcy. And then I started my first company in 2012, which was Sin City Cupcakes. Um, that started as just like a fun side hustle, fun side project. I mean, it's boozy cupcakes. Like, who doesn't love that? And um, it, it took off and gained a lot of popularity. And I stayed working full time at the law firm for the first 18 months that Sin City Cupcakes was alive. Um, just because that was my way uh, to build something very organically in a way that I was comfortable with taking risk. Mm. Um, I wanted to make sure that, you know, my, my, that my minimum bills were paid, right? Mortgage was paid, car payment was paid. Um, and any, 
discretionary income that I had and I was I was making six figures at the firm um, instead of buying shoes or going on vacation um, I just used that to pump that into my side hustle which was Sin City Cupcakes so I was working five and a half days a week at the law firm and then nights and weekends I was baking I was running deliveries I was helping set up events I mean it was like all the things you know you, you wear all the hats in the beginning of the company right um and my operations partner danielle um obviously she was holding it down full-time while i was working at the firm so that way um, i was obviously the funding partner and and so i was able to just you know help us grow i went at the firm from full-time salary to like part-time hourly and then i was per project and then i was on council uh, so to this day i still see my old boss from the firm maybe like once a quarter we like grab a drink and just kind of catch up um he's just he's a great resource and a great mentor and um, he always jokes he's always like you guys like you, you like ghosted us like after you started sin city cupcakes <laughs> which is not true but but that is kind of wild to make more money from cupcakes than from being a lawyer. Well, that's the crazy thing, right? It's like, if you look at, the, especially like the law firm structure, I mean, look, I was bringing in millions and millions of dollars of not only new business clientele, but also billable hours, right? So if you're talking about a requirement of 2,500 billable hours a year, uh, I was billing out at 450 an hour, that's over a million dollars that I'm billing, right? And my salary was what, 120? Like, you know what I mean? Like, you, you kind of like find out how the sausage is made and you're like, wait a second, you know? I thought you actually got rich from real estate. Yeah, I mean, all of the above, right? Um, so with the real estate, so my family uh, are um, commercial residential investors. And so they started investing um, like when I was a baby. Um, but I think like most kids, you don't pay attention to what your parents do. Um, so for me, I just, I didn't pay any attention to it um, until I was like a working professional and I was in my mid twenties um, and I was in law school. And so, you know, my parents started coming to me with, with contracts and, you know, different things that their lawyers were working on. And it was just kind of a way for me to be around the business a little bit. Um, and so then I started paying attention to it and I realized, you know, this idea of having different income coming in from different sources, right? Being diversified, um, being a diversified business owner, being a diversified entrepreneur. And I just, I love that. Um, you know, my mom to this day, she has a hair salon and she still services her clients that she's had for like 20 years. Um, but she obviously has a very extensive real estate portfolio. Uh, my father was in the military 20 years in the Air Force and then 20 years at the DOD. Um, so, you know, just this idea that you can have different streams of revenue coming in from different sources um, and you use that to continue to build more income. And so that was the model that I took. If you like this video, you are going to love this video right up here where I FaceTime my richest friends and ask how they made their first million dollars. I'll see you out there and I love you. Pew, pew. And don't forget to like and subscribe to this video and tell the YouTube algorithm you like this and you want more videos from Uncle Noah.